leads to um, kind of longer term, right? One of the things that we talked about last time uh, when we recorded was uh, the idea of the autonomous taxis, right? And you kind of, you know, much farther out. Um, when I asked for people to uh, questions to send in uh, for you, one of them was around this idea of uh, if that is the ultimate uh, kind of um, end state here, and that's where a lot of value gets created as well, does it make sense at any point over the short to medium term for Tesla to create an actual ride sharing app and start competing with the Ubers and, and Lyfts of the world? Or is it more continue to invest in R&D, continue to build out that actual technology, and then you back into the fleet you know, at some point in the future? Well, it's a great question uh, from a couple of angles. Uh, first, Tesla's ability to, 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 to produce is limited by, the, the constraint is management. And so they need to build out management, and they are. Uh, and so in the meantime, as they're revving up on getting their management infrastructure in place around the world, Europe, Asia, and so forth, here, here, Texas, another one. Um, uh, we do believe that they are going to start their own ride hailing service. Uh, Elon has hinted as such. I, I, I think uh, there was a question on, I think it was a recent conference call, but it could have been a podcast where Elon uh, said, yeah, it sounded like a good idea. Usually when he says that, done, you know? Now, the reason it's also a very good question is I think Uber and Lyft are in a world of hurt here. And the reason for that is the way that business was beginning to evolve is you were getting these entrepreneurs who were saying, okay, I'm going to buy several cars here and, and I, I'll buy the cars, I'll own them, and I'll, I'll populate them with riders. Well, guess what? They, they were on shoestring margins probably uh, in the early days, anyone in the early days. So a lot of them are, are going to be out of business. You know, they'll lose the cars and all of that. that and that's sad. Um, so there is an opportunity here for uh, Tesla to come in. And what that will do, it'll do two things that are very important strategically for, for, for Tesla. One, it will increase their free cash flow. It's a very, very profitable business relative to their base business today, which is just producing cars. That's uh, that the just of producing cars is, you know, a 25 to 30 percent growth gross margin business. And this is probably that this one, if it were their own ride hailing service, uh, would be north of 50 percent. The way they would probably do it, interestingly would be to say to these former entrepreneurs, uh, you know, if you give us 5,000 down on a car, we will let you become a part of our fleet. And you can pay down that car by giving us a percentage of your, uh, your uh, fees. Um, the, the take rate, it would be the take rate, the take rate for Uber and Lyft is, uh, you know, 25 to 30 percent, and we think that's going down. Um, we think uh, we think Tesla's take rate could be much higher because these owners would be paying down their cars over time, and they'd be employed in this business. So it's a win-win for, uh, for 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 both sides. It's also a win-win on in two ways for Tesla. One, the free cash flow. The second is having a ride uh, hailing uh, uh, service out there means they, their collection of data will go into overdrive. You know, they'll be pushing cars out that drive 50, 60% of the day instead of I drive my Tesla 5% uh, of the day. You know, so that I don't collect very many miles per day for Tesla to, to, to inform its AI deep learning uh, neural net systems. Uh, whereas these um, uh, th these these drivers would be contributing a lot to the data. Yeah, it, it's super interesting. Um, another name that you've been uh, quite bullish on and, and actually agree with uh, is, is somewhat un underestimated is uh, Square and what they're doing in uh, in the fintech and payment space. Maybe give us kind of your thoughts on just like why so bullish on that company, and then we can talk through some of the intricacies or nuances of it. Yeah, and I'm going to give a shout out for um, uh, to to Max Friedrich, who's our analyst, and we're just about to publish 
a white paper on um, comparing Venmo and Cash App to traditional banks and even to each other. You know, Venmo is a bit older than Cash App. And, and because of that, Cash App has some advantages, certainly in terms of its agility and in terms of marketing strategies. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a more, it's a younger, it's a younger team, I would have to say. Um, and, and we got a lot of data, you know, uh, from PayPal's API. You know, they, they, they basically publish this data. So it's a very rich white paper in terms of learning about these ecosystems and uh, learning the competitive advantages that uh, both PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App have relative to banks. So in the case, in the case of Square, um, you know, I just love it because it, it is really enabling, you know, uh, uh, the lower income strata of this economy, anywhere from the lower income to the highest income. Uh, but really, it's much more meaningful to the unbanked. And if you look at where Cash App really took off first, uh, if you look at a map, uh, and you compare it to an FDIC map of the unbanked and underbanked uh, part of the United States, you'll see the overlay is almost an exact match. Uh -huh. And so that's how it started. And it started with these mom and pop businesses uh, really using the square point of sale device to put on top of their uh, cell phone to actually do business. And so what can Square see? Unlike a bank, which can't, maybe sees end of month or end of quarter income statements, Square sees every transaction that this uh, merchant uh, make or has and can see the cadence, can see when uh, business is good, when it's bad. And what it's starting to do now is say, hey, we see that you're growing your business. We can offer you a working capital loan. And guess what? You can pay that loan off as your business. Uh, you know, daily you can pay a bit off, you know, so it becomes a real time. Oh, and we see you probably need more employees. Hey, we can help you with a payroll service. And then they will start infiltrating a consumer base too, which is part of the em employee base of this. So it's Cash App gets um, uh, 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 added strength because it's becoming part of a bigger ecosystem that is proliferating first through the South. Now it's moving up. We're seeing it move and, and you'll see uh, uh, on the maps how it is. So the competitive advantage that these companies have relative to banks, I think is going to destroy banks. It's going to turn them into a commoditized utility. I mean, there will be, um, uh, there, there will be a, a, a reason for banks, but it's not going to be it's not going to be the most profitable reason there are for banks now. 